Okay, let's add up these fractions without a calculator. So you're in for some real fun here because we get to use our brain and our knowledge of fractions to figure this out. And a lot of you might be saying to yourself, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? This is fun? Well, yes, it is fun. If you look at this problem or any math problem, and you're like, oh, my goodness, I hate doing math. I don't want to do it. Well, listen, that is going to almost set, you, uh, set yourself up for absolute failure. You're going to get something wrong. So if you have to do something, try to force yourself to have a good attitude and really stay focused in the problem. Try to kind of, you know, get just completely immersed in it. That way you don't have to think about how much you like or dislike fractions, but to be truthful about it. Way back in the good old days when I was uh, learning fractions in the 1970s, and early 80s, but mostly in the 70s. It was pretty awesome going to school, by the way, in the 70s. I remember my first grade teacher actually smoking right outside the classroom. But anyways, I digress. I remember how much I did not like fractions as well. So, you know, listen, if you're here, though, and you need to learn fractions, then try to have a good attitude. That will definitely be helpful. But anyways, we're going to add up these fractions without aid, uh, the aid of a calculator. And we need to be very careful because we have a you know, pretty good amount of things we need to do in order to figure out this problem. Now, if you think you can get this right, go ahead and pause the video and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the solution and I'm going to go through step by step how to actually add these fractions up. Of course, without the aid of a calculator. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. It's my passion. I love to teach mathematics. And I'm here to tell you that you, and I really, really believe this, that all people can be successful in mathematics. Some people are going to be like superstars, but everyone can be reasonably successful and mathematics, and I'm especially speaking to those of you out there that struggle with math or maybe hate math, okay? It doesn't have to be that way. What you need is encouragement, and you need great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of test that you're studying for, studying for that has math on it, things like the GED, um, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, nursing school entrance exam, things like that, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that cover these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my uh, math notes in the description of this video as well. But hopefully you're taking awesome math notes. If you're not, improve your notes and everything else will get better. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. I'm going to show you the answer, and then I'm going to show you the steps. So there is the answer. So we got 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth plus 1 fifth. The answer is 137 over 60. Now, if you have a mixed number fraction, just convert that to see if you into an improper fraction. But this is the answer. So how did you do? Well, if you got this right, let me give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars because it looks to me that you know what you're doing when it comes to adding up fractions. Nice job. All right, so let's get into this thing. So, uh, of course, we're adding fractions. We're not multiplying or dividing fractions. Um, so how do you add fractions? Well, let's take a look at a basic example here. Before we get into this problem, let's do an easier problem. Let's look at this problem. One-seventh plus two-sevenths. Now, can you add these fractions up? Well, yes, These are. this is an easy problem. Why is this easy? Because we can add these fractions because the denominators are the same. The bottom numbers are the same. So if the denominators are the same, okay, in this case, uh, they are, right, 7 and 7, then all we need to do is add the respective top numbers or the numerators, right, 1 plus 2. So 1 plus 2 over 7, we just write it like this. We just need one denominator. That's going to be 3 over 7, and that is it, okay? So if we're trying to add or subtract fractions, we need to get the denominators the same, okay? If we have the denominators the same, we simply add the respective numerators and we are done. But if we look at our problem here, we have a situation, okay? We have all these denominators. This denominator here right here, by the way, is one, and they are not the same. So we have a uh, 
challenge. But don't worry, we're going to fix this thing up here in one second. So anytime you're adding and subtracting fractions, you need to first examine those denominators. And we're like, okay, listen, I can't do anything with these denominators because they're not the same. So you need to be thinking to yourself, I need the same denominator, okay? And one over here, anytime you have a number, like a whole number, like six, and you want to express it or see it as a fraction or think of it as a fraction, just put it over one. So one is the same thing as one over one. Okay, so what do we need to focus on now? A little pop uh, quiz question for you. So if I need the same denominator, that is uh, what? What's the question? Well, if you said LCD, do we need to find LCD? You would be absolutely correct. We need the lowest common denominators. Let's go ahead and talk about that right now. Okay, so we know we can't add these fractions up because the... Uh, do not have the same denominator. So we need to fix up these fractions such that they do have the same denominator. And what we're really saying is, hey, we want to get all these denominators in common. We want to uh, find a common denominator with all these denominators or all these numbers that are in the denominator. So how many denominators uh, do all these numbers have in common? Well, they actually have an infinite amount of numbers in common. Okay, well, that would just, you know, it's just too general. So what we want to do is find the lowest common denominator. Okay, lowest common denominator. You know, anytime you're dealing in mathematics with, you know, abbreviations and, you know, definitions, just stop and think about what it's saying. LCD, lowest common denominator. Okay, so how do you find the lowest common denominator? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that now. But uh, real quick, if I said one-third plus two-fifths, and I just ask you real um, real fast, like, hey, what's the LCD here? Okay, Most of you uh, could say, isn't it 15? And you would be correct. Okay, But how did you know that? Some of you, or a lot of you out there, wouldn't really kind of understand how you got that answer. You'd be like, yeah, it's 15. I just knew it was 15. <laughs> and that's perfectly okay because most people don't truly, I don't want to say most people, but a lot of uh, students um, don't really truly comprehend how to find the LCD. And this is very uh, important, not only in um, arithmetic, but in algebra as well. So when we're trying to find the lowest common denominator, effectively what we're doing is we have to multiply the unique prime factors of all the denominators. So here, this number, this number, this number, this number, and then this number down here, one. All these numbers, we need to find the prime factors of all these numbers, and we need to find one big product of all the unique prime factors. That is the formula to find the lowest common denominator. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so here we go. So we have uh, 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth. So let's take a look at each of the denominators and uh, the prime factors of the denominator. So what is a prime factor? Let me just show you this here real quick just in case you don't uh, remember. Uh, let's suppose I have the number, I don't know, let's say 16, okay? Is 16 prime? No, we can write, eh, let's do a better number than that. Let's uh, go 20, okay? Is 20 a prime number? No, it's not, okay? Remember the definition of prime is like a number 7 where the only factors of that number is 1 and that number, like 1 and 7, right? There's no other number that goes into 7. So 20 is not a prime number, so we can start factoring that using a factor tree. So, for example, we can go like this, 2 times 10. Uh, so is 2 a prime factor? Yes, 2. The only other number goes into 2 is 2, so that's prime. And then 10 could be uh, broken down further into 2 times 5. So these are all prime numbers. So these would be all the prime factors of 20. So hopefully you kind of already know this stuff. If you do not, uh, let me just give you a couple quick set, uh, suggestions if you um, need help on this, okay, if you're already kind of lost. One, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel on basic mathematics, a lot on, st on fractions and uh, lowest common denominator, LCM, all that kind of good stuff. But I probably uh, would point you towards my... Um, Math Foundations course. It's a nice little mini course, three chapter mini course that covers basic mathematics. You can find it in my math help program, that course or my pre-algebra course. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at these numbers. So what is the prime factors of one? Easy, it's just one. 
okay? Two is two a prime number. Two right there is prime, so we've got two as a prime factor there. But again, we're looking at the denominators, right? Three, well, three is prime by itself. Now, four, a little bit different, right? Four is not prime, so that could be two times two. Okay, now these are the prime factors of four. So instead of writing this, uh, this as two times two, we're gonna write this as two squared, okay? Because two times two is two squared, and you're gonna see why here in a second. And five is a prime number, so we'll just write that as five. All right, now let's go ahead and get to the LCD. All right, so remember the lowest common denominator is gonna be the product of all the prime factors of the denominators. So let's take a look at uh, this prime factor of one. It's obviously one, so we need that represented in our LCD, okay? I'm gonna get to these twos here in a second, okay? Just hold on one second, I wanna explain this. So we need that one. We need all the any unique prime factor. So three, we have to have that represented in our prime, um, our LCD. Five is a unique prime factor. We need that in there as well. So here we have two and two squared. Now two, this two right there is really two to the first power. Okay, we don't write two as two to the first, but that's what it is. We have two to the first and two squared. But let's notice we're dealing with the same number two. So the question is, do I have to have a two uh, and then a two squared in the LCD? No, okay, you don't have to. All you need is the highest power of this number. So if this prime factor is two to the first and this is two squared, anytime you run into that situation where you have the same number but to a different power, you always, always take the highest power of that number. So we're gonna put in two squared, not two to the first, two squared, okay? That's an important uh, concept that a lot of students confuse. But now we're ready to go ahead and um, calculate our LCD. So what is two squared? Well, two squared is four, so it's gonna be one times four times three times five. And we're gonna go ahead and do that multiplication. One times four times three times five, we get 60. So 60 is the LCD. Now, some of you uh, may have already seen that, but here, uh, here's the deal. Um, I wanted to review how to find the LCD because even though these numbers aren't too difficult, if I change these numbers up, can you imagine if I had like 408, 526, uh, 370, uh, let's call it 370, 222, and 10, oh, I don't know, like 106. Something like, what if these denominators were this way? Uh, most of you would just be like, forget this, I'm not doing this problem. Uh, I am leaving this YouTube channel and never returning. Listen, I get it, right? But this is, you know, these type of problems, you know, do exist, right? This problem is not that challenging. So if you know the process, to find the LCD, you would prime factor all these denominators. It would take you time. It's, it's not an easy problem, but you would prime factor all those things down and you would just follow this little recipe and get to your LCDs. That's why I'm really explaining this. Uh, in my YouTube channel or what I do in my videos is I want to walk, you know, I want you to walk away with a complete understanding of all the elements of the solution, right? I'm just not going to show you the answer. Like one, two, three, here's the answer. I want you to learn something for the long run. Okay, so that is the LCD 60. So what does that mean? Well, it means the following. So we have these fractions here. What we're gonna do here, this fraction has, uh, its denominator is one, this is two, that's three, that's four, that's five. Well, we're going to have to rewrite all these denominators such that they have this 60 in the bottom. This is the lowest common denominator, okay? So we're gonna have to rewrite each fraction, okay? such that its denominator is 60. All right, so that's what we're gonna to have to do next. And let's take a look at how we do that. Okay, so uh, here is our fractions. Okay, one over one, one half. You can see I already did the work in advance, one third, one fourth, and one fifth. Okay, so here this denominator is one. We know we have to turn this one into a 60. How can I turn a one into a 60? Easy, just multiply it by 60, right? But here's the deal. Anytime you're rewriting fractions, whatever you do to the denominator, you have to do the exact same thing to the numerator. So I'm gonna take that 60 and multiply by that one, I get 60, and then 60 times this one is 60, because look, 60 divided by 60 is in fact one, 
Okay, so when you're rewriting a fraction, you're not breaking it, you're not changing the value, you're just making it look different. Uh, and the reason why we're making it look different is we want that 60 in the denominator, right? We're just rewriting it in a way that uh, gets that uh, common denominator and all these various fractions. Okay, so let's look at the fraction 1 half. How can I turn that 2 in the denominator into 60? Easy, just take uh, that 2 and multiply it by 30. Now, if you don't know what number to multiply, just take 60 and divide by this number, okay, 2, all right? Oh, 60 divided by 2 is 30. That's what you need to multiply by. So 30 times 2 is 60, and then we have to multiply the numerator by 30 as well. So 30 times 1 is 30. Okay, so here we have the fraction 1 third. How do I turn this into a 60? Just multiply by 20, right? So 20 times uh, 3, 60, and 20 times 1 is 20. All right, so here we have a 4. How do I turn a 4? into 60. Again, if you don't know the answer, just take that 4 and divide it by 60, uh, and you'll, be, uh, you'll see that the answer is 15. You're like, oh, okay, 15 times 4 is 60. So I have to multiply 15 times 1, which is 15. And then we, uh, we have a 5 as this denominator, so we multiply that by 12, and the numerator by 12. So we get 12 over 60. Now, I didn't say this problem was like 1, 2, 3 in terms of being uh, uh, easy, okay, because there is a decent amount of work. You know, there's a difference between simple and easy. Is it a simple problem? Well, in you know, for some of you out there, it's uh, simple. You know, some of you out there, you know, might have already taken calculus, okay, but some of you might just be learning this for the first time. But I don't know if it's necessarily easy because there's a lot of work that you have to track and there's a lot of uh, opportunities to make a mistake. But at this point in the problem, okay, what did we do? Well, we rewrote each fraction, okay, we rewrote one uh, such that it has a denominator of 60, we wrote, uh, rewrote one half, so now it's denominator of 60, that's 30 over 60. Imagine if you just said, hey, reduce that fraction, you get back to one half, same thing with one third, well, same thing with one fourth, and same thing with one fifth. If you, if you reduce all these fractions, you're going to get back to these original fractions. So you're not breaking the problem, but we finally, finally have the same denominator. Now we can add these fractions, okay? So let's go ahead and do this now. And here we go, right? So same denominator, so that's 60. So all we're going to do is add the respective numerators. So we have 60 plus 30 plus 20 plus 15 plus 12 is 137 over 60. And there you go. There is the final answer. Okay, so, you know, again, when it comes to arithmetic, and this is what this is, this is, you know, basic you know, math that you would be learning, um, you know, in the fifth grade, definitely the sixth grade. And I even hate to use that word basic. I probably should refrain from using it because nothing's basic. Okay. Math is math. And, uh, you know, you need to respect each math problem you do. I mean, this was a decent amount of work. So if you're learning this, you're like, that's a lot of work. This is difficult for me. That's okay. Okay. Cause it's probably difficult for a lot of people. There's a lot of things that I covered in here, you know, the LCD, you know, how to, um, the, the reason why we need to have the same denominators, you know, prime factoring, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, don't be too tough on yourself if you're learning this and you're like, I'm not doing well with it. Look, this is probably not the problem to start with. What you need to do is start with problems like this, okay? Nice, easy problems and work your way up. But I like to throw these things in there just to, uh, you know, have fun with these numbers. It's a good exercise because arithmetic you know, is so important to your understanding of algebra. So if some of you are studying algebra, or if you're taking arithmetic right now, you would definitely will be taking algebra. Just don't think that, oh, once I'm done with arithmetic, I don't have to do this stuff by hand anymore. I can just use my calculator and forget all this stuff. Not true, okay? You gotta keep these skills, um, you know, anytime you learn a math skill, you gotta keep them for the long run. Okay, so again, if you need help with fractions, uh, Basically, three suggestions. One, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that explain all things fractions, all different little subcategories of fractions. And then my two courses where I really teach them or teach fractions formally would be my Math Foundations course and my Pre-Algebra course. You can find that all at my Math Help program. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.